join us a couple minutes late, then I'll just uh, get them added in. So are you ready then? Give me one second to make sure we go on air. Uh, I believe so, Mark. Okay, then uh, welcome to my June 30th bike, Fitchburg Bike Committee to order. And I think that before we approve the minutes, why don't we introduce ourselves to our to Let's our? See. Oh, you Sorry, want to Mark, do that? Me, yeah, I've got the, I've got the agenda. I can go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, then go ahead and go. All right, you all seeing that? The technology is improving. That's right. So you all want right. me to go ahead, or you want to take it over? Um, no, you you can go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure we actually had the the agenda up here. Okay, so at 7, 7.34 a.m., we will call the meeting to order the Fitchburg Bike Committee. You can see the agenda in front of you. Uh, and uh, before we approve the minutes, I would like to introduce um, our new members to the committee. Uh, Joe Maldonado, I see you're muted right now, but welcome. Um, and if uh, you're, Joe is the alder, is it District 1? Is that correct, Joe? You're muted. You're still muted, Joe. All right, here we go. Yes, District One, that is correct. So welcome to the committee. Um, why don't we start, and then Ellie, um, this is your second meeting, am I correct? Uh, this is my first meeting. Your first meeting, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I apologize, I wanna welcome you to the committee as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so I'm a student at UW, um, a grad student studying epidemiology. Um, I've lived in Fitchburg for five years, I think now, and before that was living in Madison. Um, so for a total in the area, of kind of like 10 years probably. Um, yeah, and I'm really interested in biking. I bike to campus year round. Um, Although not now, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and part of my uh, studies also include physical activity. So I'm, um, you know, not only like personally really into biking, but also um, academically really interested in physical activity. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Well, welcome to our two new members. If the others could introduce themselves to... Uh, to Ellie and uh, so some of us already know Joe, but Angie and Phil and we had Andy Potts here. I don't see him. Is he still there? He's here. Okay. If we could introduce ourselves to uh, to Joe and Ellie, it would be appreciated. Um, my name is Angie Lucas, and I've been a resident of Fitchburg for almost 27 years, um, and I um, spend a majority of my time commuting and biking in general, just for enjoyment and commuting. So this was of interest to me. I've been, this will be my, I just started my second term on this committee. Thank you, Angie. Andy or Phil? I can go next. Uh, my name is Andy Potts. I'm a year resident of Fitchburg. Um, former alder who's on city council for 10 years, representing district one. Um, a, during non-pandemic times, I'm a, a commuter to work, um, now just riding, mostly recreationally at this point, um, although at one point in time I did race, but that's been a couple decades now at this point. <laughs> okay. And welcome aboard. Phil? Sure. Uh, I probably know you, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, maybe. I'm Phil Groupie. I'm the sustainability specialist with Fitchburg. I've been with the city for a little bit under a year. Um, so technically, I'm, I report to this committee as a as a staff member, but I also have been uh, I've been living in the Madison area for a little bit over ten years, and I've been uh, gotten increasingly into cycling that whole time. Kind of similar to you, Ellie. Once I once I got to grad school, I started biking a lot more uh, to and from campus, and that stuck with me uh, in in the years since I finished my master's. That's a, a pretty regular pretty regular part of my uh, free time now. Thank you, Phil. And again, um, I'm Mark Hamilton. I am a, a retired executive from UW Health, and I've lived in Fitchburg for 28 years and been biking uh, even before I moved here. But uh, 
the um, it's been it's a pleasure to be chair of this group and uh, we have some um, some new ideas we're going to continue to push on as we move forward. So, uh, Phil, let's go back and move right into approval of the minutes. Okay. Uh, you folks all got the minutes on the agenda. I hope you've all had a chance to look at them. Is there any discussion or is there any, um, uh, all right, no discussion, I'll entertain a motion to approve to keep the meeting moving. So any questions on the January 7th minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Andy. Do we have a second? A second. Seconded by Angie. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will move approval. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion approved, and the minutes are passed. Um, I doubt we had any, but probably would want to ask for any opposed as well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm just getting, still getting used to doing these Zoom meetings. For sure. Are there any opposed? Hearing none, we will move approval. <laughs> sorry about that. All right. So um, do we have any public appearances for non-agenda items? Andrew, did any community members end up coming into the council chambers? No, there's no Okay, thanks. Sounds like a no, Mark. Okay, and then we will take a look at today's agenda. Um, is there any feedback on that agenda that you are seeing or do you wish to change or we can add, we will add under new items. So um, hearing none, uh, let's move into the agenda, and we had already done item A, so I'm going to move it, turn it over to Phil and cover item 5B, which is updates on the projects around the bike network. So, Phil, it's all yours. Sure. So, um, so this is for, for uh, Joe and Ellie. This is kind of a regular uh, agenda item for the bike committee, just going through uh, typically public works projects, but any other projects that are going to have an impact on the Fitchburg bike network that, that um, just for um, just for the committee's information, and then uh, some of these sometimes will will lead into some conversations between uh, the committee or myself and the public works staff to talk about uh, if there's any way we can support this or things that we think may may need to be adjusted if at all possible. Um, just to, given our knowledge of the the cycling network and and community's needs. Um, so the three projects, uh, the, the three significant ones that are ongoing right now are McKee Road is being resurfaced from Seminole Highway over to uh, Almost Verona Road. Um, Fish Hatchery, of course, being uh, is, is in the middle of a two-year reconstruction project all the way down uh, from, from McKee Road up past Traceway up, up towards about Post. Um, and the Badger State Trail over... Uh, McKee Road is being redone, and they're actually going to be putting in an, an overpass on the Badger State Trail uh, at McKee, similar to what, what already exists for the Military Ridge Trail. Uh, at this point, I don't have any um, any updates of, of note to those projects. They're all still moving forward as scheduled. They sh they should uh, McKee Road should be done this fall. Uh, Badger State Trails overpass, uh, likewise, I think by either October or November. Um, and Fish Hatchery Road is, because it's a two-year project, we've got uh, down to about Traceway this year and then next year, uh, Fish Hatch will be completed from Traceway down to McKee. Um, both McKee and Fish Hatchery, when, when the construction is done, there will be a, a 10-foot wide multi-use path that's available uh, for, for pedestrian traffic, bike traffic, um, along the west side of Fish Hatchery and I believe the south side of McKee. Um, so those will that that kind of fits with with the uh, League of American Bicyclists recommendations that any any road in a community that's uh, got a speed limit posted of 35 miles an hour or higher should have protected or separated bike lanes. Um, so that's that's something we're going to have on both of those roads now, which is going to be uh, I, I just think a lot a lot easier for people who are not comfortable biking near cars moving that quickly and should uh, should be a safer safer situation. So that's exciting. Um, Moving on then to other projects that uh, are upcoming, some that a couple that we've talked about, but several that we have not. Um, 
So the first one is uh, Dane County Parks is still going through their multi-year, multi-phase Capital City Trail resurfacing. Um, this is a little bit different map than I've showed in the past because they have not yet updated their official map showing the phases. So they've already done uh, the trail from, from east here over near kind of the Nine Springs uh, uh, Park, the, the E-Way. Uh, down past Fish Hatch, and from uh, last year was Fish Hatch to Seminole, they completed. This year, it's a pretty, a relatively short stretch. They're going to be resurfacing from Seminole Highway to the bike roundabout. That's going to start uh, in July, and that should be completed, uh, I think, sometime in October, similar to last year. Um, now, the, the impact of that is going to be right now, we've already got the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't like that full screen. Uh, we already have the Badger State Trail south of the roundabout closed, and the bike lanes on the Seminole are are not available right now because that's down to one lane each direction due to the construction. Um, so losing the Cap City Trail here just means that it's a, a, again a little bit uh, more reduction of options for cycling, but at least at least with the Cap City Trail, um, the Cannonball is a you know nearly identical route, so that 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 shouldn't take away. Uh, significantly from any cycling options going east-west there. Um, the, the big one will just be getting getting Badger and Seminole back for our north-south routes uh, will be so really Phil, nice. Phil, just a question. Are we going to direct them on Cannonball? I'm assuming that's the plan, but... Um, I believe that's the plan. Yeah, I'll need to check back in with Alex with, with Dane County, um, but that's what they did last year for the, the, the section from Fish Hatch to Seminole is that at both sides of the closure they put uh, they put some some road closure signs, but then also um, I think they had a map showing detours, and they they explained the project and the timeline. The other thing around signage or around issues is that they uh, you had, we had Andy Potts I think had had raised in January the runover on the Cap City Trail as you go east off of uh, well past Fish Hatchery. There's three or yep. four areas there. Yeah, we got the mm -hmm. we got the mouse over there. They've got to fix the drainage, and they told you. They were going to do that as part of that project. It might behoove us to remind them that they've still got issues over there. Yep, and I can certainly, um, I can certainly follow up with Alex again and just just double check that that is. So, so when I asked in, I want to say February about that, uh, Alex did assure me that they were already planning on including uh, some of those drainage issues as part of their resurfacing. But, but I can, uh, I can always just follow up one more time. I'll kind of keep an eye on on the, the public messaging on construction. If it doesn't look like that's part of it, then I'll just, I'll have to follow up and, and make sure that, that we're clear on that needing to be done. Yeah, thank you. I, I wrote it Monday and it's, it's, it's not any better. In fact, it's getting worse. Oh, well, that's the opposite of what we want to happen. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just wrote it about uh, two hours ago and it's pretty <laughs> wet after the rain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's that's just stay on enough. top of it. Cause again, I think it's important for the people coming through our city that they've got it's uh, it's taken care of. They spent a lot of money on that ref on that refurbishment. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, would like it to last as long as possible and be enjoyable. Um, but yeah, that's the the Cap City Trail reconstruction that'll be summer and fall this year. Um, then we've got uh, this is from the capital improvement projects uh, that was that was just recently um, submitted to the, to the city. Uh, there was a CIP request by Public Works uh, to do some some uh, drainage improvements with. Actually, sorry, let me just put it on my nose to myself. Make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, yeah, some some drainage improvements around the bike roundabout. So we've just got the aerial view of the roundabout up here. Uh, the the short version is that there are a couple places where drainage has not been ideal. Um, just some some stormwater issues. Occasionally, stormwater runs across. Uh, I think we're looking north up at the top here, so this would be the Capital City Trail. Uh, and I think there are some drainage issues around here. Uh, so this is going to be an engineering project that, that we've got budgeted for next year. Um, there's an RFP that's currently out. A study is expected to happen this fall. Uh, and then construction would occur next fall. It's uh, at this point. Um, Public Works has not clear the impact this will have on bike trails, if any. I don't know if this is something that they'll need to close the, the bike trails for a certain amount of time so that they can handle the drainage directly underneath the network or if they'll be able to keep it open the entire time. But that is 
that's an upcoming project for next year in the fall. Um, that, that was just, um, I was just sort of alerted to this, this past month of the RCC meeting. And as I recall, she wants feedback on this. The lady sent you the note. Does any of the, the committee so this members is have it? This is different from that. So well, that's, that's another one that's coming that. up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got a couple right. things coming up at the roundabout. All right. Um, Roundabout's a popular place. Yeah, it is. Yep. Um, speaking of the roundabout, I got this from uh, Alex. Alex just met with Dane County when, when I asked him for an update on the uh, Cap City Trail resurfacing. Um, and this is, uh, this right here might look a little unfamiliar because uh, we have a new electronic uh, state trail pass pay station uh, that's been put in the roundabout. I'm not sure the exact date that it's going to come online, but he said soon. And that was, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, I, I believe I haven't been down there yet. It looks like this is a little solar panel to, to power the, the pay station, but uh, I just think that it's it's going to be really nice to have this electronic option rather than only having the the envelopes that you put cash into the box. I, I don't think there are many of us that carry the exact amount of cash that we need to get a pass when we're out on the trail, and so being able to um, being able to rip, stop putting your credit card and, and and get a pass in case you've forgotten, I think is going to going to be great for making people's lives easier, and then also. Uh, I would imagine getting a higher percentage of people who ride the trails actually purchasing a pass, which is only going to help increase funding to to keep up with maintenance and, and improvements. Uh, this is now where we're going to get to. I uh, heard from the Madison Metro Sewer District. Uh, there are an, uh, there, there's a whole suite of projects that they're looking at at improving all around the the roundabout area. Um, they asked me for some feedback on these projects, and I thought it would be good to, to bring it to the committee. They actually want the feedback by today. Um, so I wanted to, to present these to you and just open it up for discussion and see if anybody has any concerns, any questions that, that we'd like to submit. Um, but the, uh, there are a number of trail improvements they're looking at. One, this is south of the bike, bike roundabout here on, um, um, let's see, on the key road in Cap City. Okay, so this is coming down, I believe, uh, military Ridge, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, is that right, Mark? I don't think I so. Think. I mean, um, that's that's certainly not the way. I don't see the bridge. The cat, the, maybe somebody, Andy or so, Angie, maybe so, you. So can I'm know. thinking this is, I think this is just south of the Military Ridge overpass over McKee. Okay. Uh, other side, I think. You're on the, this, is the, this, is the, this is the north side of the bridge. So, north side, oh, okay. So the, the parking lot on the top of the screen, that should be Circo, and that's uh, the corner of Playcon building. Um, okay, thanks, Andy. Should have should have confirmed that before I brought it in. But uh, but yeah, this is just a, a trail connection. There's a pretty sharp right angle here that's a little bit, it, it causes a near stop for cyclists, and so smoothing that out to enable a little bit smoother traffic flow uh, is one thing they want to look at. Um, another part of this project is going to be just adding a sign similar to this Dolly Hub sign just to alert uh, alert trail users to uh, water fountain bike repair station near Saris. Um, so we've got one assigned. This is, I believe, coming from the Cannonball path. So they'd like to have one on the Military Ridge Trail as well. Hmm. Uh, they're looking at some invasive species removal, native restoration. Um, that's not really uh, a trail issue per se, but it's around the it's, a, it's around the bike roundabout. Um, installing a solar light. Uh, so that's just going to increase lighting, uh, just just improve lighting uh, at all hours of the day near the roundabout. Uh, and then the most significant uh, uh, detail of this project is that uh, we're looking at up here is the Cannonball Trail coming down to the roundabout about here, uh, south along Military Ridge, and then picking up Military Ridge again south of, um, or I guess north of McKee, south of, I can't remember what this road is here. That's not, yeah, but, but, oh, it's profit. It's, profit, yeah. it's in big letters and I'm trying to read this tiny one here. Good morning, everyone. Um, so these red sections of the trail here uh, are, are sections that they may need to close. So this is where some of this work is going on. Um, the reasons that, that 
they suggest this only be closed? Is there wetlands along here? And they, they'd like to, you know, they're going to need to bring in equipment to do some of this work. And rather than having the equipment off the trail and on the wetlands, they'd rather have the equipment on the trail while they're doing that because it's it's less um, less impactful on the on the uh, natural areas um, because they're doing some some drainage things as well here. So this is a sewer district. So so one of the significant things because um, this I'm just talking about the trail improvement here, uh, but it is a sanitary uh, and, and drainage project. And so they're going to be laying pipes and rather than trying to drill holes under the trail without disrupting it and laying the pipe, uh, it's going to be a lot easier um, for them to just kind of close off the trail and do this work. Uh, the, the, the plan right now, they definitely want to wait until the current work on the Badger State Trail and Seminole Highway are finished so that we get those north-south routes back on the bike network. Uh, but they're projecting that this will begin winter of this year, winter of 2020. Uh, it'll be a full year before it's completed, but it won't be, my understanding is it's not going to be uh, that full 12 month period that the trails are closed. It's kind of a, they're doing it in chunks since there'll be some, some points where it's closed, some where it's open. Um, but that, that will kind of occur over a 12 month period, those, those series of closures. So that's, that's kind of, and there's, it also sounds like when they're, when they're doing some of the work around the bike roundabout, they mean that they may need to close the whole bike roundabout. I don't know for how long that's something that, that when that comes up and they have uh, a more specific project plan, then we'll need to know about that and talk about it. Um, but right now what they've got is they have an open, um, they have a feedback uh, website that they've shared with me with Mike Fitchberg. And I just kind of wanted to bring this to the committee and ask if there's any, any feedback, any concerns, any questions. When would the, when would the repairs take place around? Um, that I'm not sure. It, it sounds like they're trying to target uh, more off-peak months, so more wintertime repairs, but I don't, I, I don't believe they have a specific project plan in place yet. Well, the, the key with this, Joe, is that we're, and I think Andy said, or Phil said, we're gonna have to have the Cap City Trail open to get across PD, otherwise, you're not, if you look at this, you're not going to be able to get over to the Military Ridge Trail without going up uh, the detour that folks are using now. So I think they got to be all timed together. Um, those of you that ride a lot may offer some other feedback, but I think that's got to be the key is that um, they've got to get, they're in stages. So, so um, th this is going back a little bit, but um, I heard you say, you know, there's going to be like a bridge going over McKee, um, yep, on the Badger State Trail here. How so, how, how is that going to look? Um, is, will it be sort of one of those like you ride up? Like uh, the, no, it's it's going to be similar to the Military Ridge, just kind of a slow ramp up and down. Oh, got it. Okay. And Joe, if you look at it, I, I was over there yesterday. If you look at it, they're building that concrete ramp to if you're on McKee to try and get up to it. That's being built, and the bridge will go over it. Okay. Yeah. You can you, the bridge abutment on the south side is getting um, pretty well established. You can right. get an idea of what it'll look like. Okay. I've been avoiding that area for <laughs> ever since construction, so I want to check yeah. it out. Well, it's it, not it's, it's not any better. <laughs> yeah, there is a really well marked detour, but not a. It's definitely got some hills. Uh, I think a lot of people have been finding other places to bike. And we'll still have to deal with that detour. That's what I'm saying. Right. When, when, the, when this is closed. Uh, well, yeah, when this is closed, then we'll have a detour that takes us on Badger State Trail so people get plenty of opportunity to experience the new bridge. So this feedback page that you referred to, is that, mm -hmm. on, is that on Dane County's web page? Um, I don't know if it's actually on Dane County's webpage. It it was uh, it was a link that MMSD emailed out to me and to to a few other groups that they wanted feedback from. Okay. So my 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 hope was just to kind of aggregate comments and concerns here and have it all come in one bundle. Yeah. Excuse me, in one bundle. Yeah, I I've had a few people in the community voice some concerns about the Badger Trail, and I was thinking that maybe it was 
in the Mahoney's area instead of necessarily Fitchburg's. And so maybe I could just mention them and you can tell me that. I, I was thinking if there was a feedback page, I could just refer them to say, hey, contact this group about that. Um, the, the two concerns that I've had recently mentioned to me are on the Badger Trail and further out. So if you're coming from Madison, you cross over Seminole Highway. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, if you're coming from Madison, you cross over Lacey. As you're riding down before you get to Wayland Road, the bike trail curves up to take you off onto Roman Road um, off of Seminole Highway. And it, it just curves up in one direction. It, it doesn't curve up if you're coming from, um, from the, the direction on Wayland Road. And with all the increased use of bikers on that road, that's kind of a conflict area where if you're coming off of Roman onto the bike trail, you kind of have to make a really wide loop around. And I've heard from people that there's been some collisions or near collisions in that area. So their question was, could we have it curve up to that exit onto Broman, both coming from Madison and also coming from Wayland? And I looked at it the other day, and I'm wondering if there might be a drainage issue. Um, possible. I, I think that would probably be just a general feedback concern to okay. Okay. Um, Badger State Trail. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I would imagine that that is a... It's because it's a state trail that's going to be DNR handling that. So it would be a, a comment for they asked me to elevate the DNR. They said it was in Fitchburg. And so I said, okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. And, and that's always a tricky one. But but because it's a state, because it's a state bike trail, the same way that this, this CCT issue, that's a, uh, something that's being done by the county resurfacing it rather than Fitchburg. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And there, there is one other area, but it's also, I think, part of the, the DNR, so, okay. But I think, Angie, if you want to send us a note specifying these, we can pass it along for you. Okay. I think, I think our bike committee can certainly do that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any near misses, but I do know what you're talking about. Where yeah. is the other one you're talking about? Um, the other one is as you're on the Badger Trail and you're heading out to where it goes from paved to gravel, so um, Purcell Road. Right. It's you enter the trail kind of at an angle and yeah. people coming from the parking lot or from the road or going to the parking lot and to the road are having to make a, a it, it's also a collision point basically. It's a very tight turn. I, I agree with you. Right. And so they're wondering if we could have like a apron there somehow to make that a wider paved area um, to make access on and off at that location better. I think those are both good suggestions. So again, I I have no problem if you can if you can specify them out for us because I've got another one on the the Cap okay. City Trail signage wise that I sent to uh, to Phil and Bill Balky. Uh, we're not going to talk about today, but yeah. there's some confusing points as you come off Fish Atchery heading down Glacier Valley. Unless you know to go right, there's no sign mm -hmm. telling you to go right. right, and people are going north on Fish Atch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're I just. I said I'd mention it. So. No, no, no I'm, I'm glad you did. For, for the second one you're mentioning, are you talking about here? You said here where Badger crosses Purcell? Yes, exactly. Okay. Right. And that one, I mean, one, that's going to be a, a DNR issue, but that's even down in Belleville, I think. Yeah, I um, was wondering if that was, you know, it's borderline. <laughs> and, yeah. And I wasn't exactly yeah. sure that when that, based on where the Fishburg sign is, yeah, it's not Fishburg, but. Okay. Purcell is the boundary. Is yeah. it? Okay. And and it basically is, it's just a really tight angled area that yeah. there's a lot of people down there now that are, they've got young kids down there and, and they're just mm -hmm. not paying attention. And there's roads coming in at the same point and they said, boy, we just had a little bit of extra paving material. We could make that wider. But I'm like, well, I'll mention it. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Definitely things to keep in mind. And I mean, like, like you mentioned, either Mark or Andy about the, the the Stewart Tunnel. It's not necessarily in Fitchburg, but these these trails are connectors enough between communities that they do kind of impact everyone along the route. Mm -hmm. So it's good stuff to to keep in mind and and try to elevate those concerns. Yeah. Um. For for this Mad Sewer project of the roundabout, um. My my plan is to just 
confirm that we can find out when the repairs are going to take place, when the trails are going to be closed, especially when the bike roundabout is likely to be closed. Um, kind of just, again, confirming that they're going to wait to start these projects until we know that the Cap City Trail and Badger State Trail are open. Uh, is there anything else worth uh, worth mentioning, worth asking about? Well, my comment would just be to the extent they can minimize closing the roundabout, that's really going to be preferable. Yeah. As mentioned, the same way that we're using, or that we will be using the cannonball as a detour for Cap City, it's just going to be vice versa. And if the roundabout's closed, that option doesn't work. Right. And um, I guess it's, I, I, I also want to confirm this. My guess is if they're working on the surface of the roundabout, that the, the uh, Southwest commuter path turning into the Badger State Trail, that goes over the roundabout on that bridge. My guess is that will probably remain open. They will still be able to get north, south in the Badger. Um, but yeah, that would, that would close down everything east, west, the, the Cap City, the Cannonball, the Military Ridge trails. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely the shortest uh, amount of time possible on the closure is, is what we're going to be looking for. I'll, I'll make sure to stress that in my comments. Thanks, Andy. Okay, um, I'm trying to stay on uh, task here. It is um, is there any, are there any other questions of Phil on the bike projects? Again, I think- we So I do have a couple other projects to get through and I can try to move through them quickly. I just wanted to make sure we cover those comments. Um, but yeah, it looks like we got, what is it, 10 minutes left on, on this item. And I, I would imagine the next one we might talk about for a bit. So I right. uh, wouldn't mind finishing this one a couple minutes early. Um, this one we can go through, I think, relatively quickly. There are a number of projects slated for 2021. Um, and this is a little bit of an old map from Public Works, but they should all still be, uh, it, it should still be applicable. All the 2021 projects were here in Teal. Um, so one is we've got Lacey Road from the Badger State Trail, almost to Fitzrona, where uh, they're gonna be adding, uh, doing some rework on Lacey Road, and that'll uh, include on-street bike lanes with two foot buffers. And there's also gonna be a multi-use trail on the north side of the road. Um, that'll be an interesting one to see how that shakes out. Cause I know when Bill was originally talking to me, um, that north side of the road, I believe there's a section that does have wetlands, and so he was looking at, at, at getting a sort of like cantilevered um, or, or, or somehow elevated uh, multi-use trail along the north side that would uh, avoid disturbing those wetlands. Um, so I'll be curious to see what kind of engineering magic Bill comes up with to make that trail a possibility or if he's found another solution. Um, uh, there's a, a bunch of work. Uh, on Syene Road, so we've got from from Aurora down to McCoy, and 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 a little bit or up to McCoy and a little bit farther. Uh, we're going to have on street bike lanes added there. Where right now I don't believe we do. There's going to be a signal added here at East Cheryl, um, and then uh, adding a mini roundabout. So Nine Bark is, uh, I believe, this road here. I guess this was East Cheryl. Nine Bark, I think, is right here. They're going to be adding a mini roundabout, and then also one at, at uh, McCoy. Um, so, so just a, a lot of improvements to to Syene Road that are that are aimed at improving safety for both bikes and for pedestrians, um, and then a, a lot of this new development kind of on the south side of East Cheryl, east of Syene, where we've got the uh, uh, Phoenix coming in, and there are a couple of those new apartment uh, multifamily developments. Um, they're going to kind of re be redoing their elevated green cycle track to to add some sidewalk as well. Uh, so just an anticipating further further expansion out in that area, leading to increased bike and pedestrian traffic. Uh, Fish Hatch, sorry, go ahead, Angie. That'll be a great thing to redo that green area out by where Phoenix went in. I've had people comment on um, that they choose not to ride on the green area. They just ride on the road because the green area oh, really? kind of cuts you in and out of traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there's, I've had some people have concerns about that. Yeah, it'll be good to good to fix that then, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Fish Hatch, as already mentioned, that's going to continue next year from Traceway South to McKee Road. Um, there's a little bit more information on Cyan here. Uh, we're looking at possibly adding bike lanes all the way uh, down through Irish Lane. The concern here has to do with, uh, with property lines, and there's really very little room for us to expand our roadway because of private property. Um, uh, a few years ago, uh, state statutes were adjusted so that um, uh, 
public lands or uh, 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 municipalities in the state could not purchase private land to convert it to bike um, bike infrastructure. Um, so because of that restriction, that's going to make it really tough for us to expand full bike lanes along uh, along Syene South to Irish. But but Bill's looking at some creative ways to handle that. Um, can widen the road a little bit, but I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out if it's enough for just sort of a kind of a, a relatively wide shoulder, if he can actually get bike lanes in there. But but I, I think that that's one that for the time being, we might have to be, um, we might have to just take what we're able to get because I just, I don't know that there's going to be any ability for us to make the road wide enough to add full bike lanes. I would um, think, I, I live in that area. I ride yeah. through there a lot. And mm -hmm. um, I, I can see where there would be property issues. Um, mm -hmm. I would think even if we could have, even if we could have a paved shoulder without a bike lane, that would be a huge improvement over what's there. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty certain that's the goal. But yeah, I'm just gonna kind of wait and see when we get closer to the period. What I, I don't think Bill has the, um, the construction specs yeah. put together yet. Heavy use area with the Iron Man coming through there, so the people. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, and then two projects along Rimrock or MM. Uh, one is going to be the intersection of Lacey and MM by Terravesa is going to be improved. Uh, I believe that one is right here. That's going to be improved with a, a, a new signal and a trail connection to Terravesa. Um, so that that whole thing should be done. That actually may be, I think that's a 2020 project. And I have that uh, mistakenly with 2021. That should be all taking place this July, I think. Um, and then the city of Madison will add signal shortly thereafter. Uh, and then up here where McCoy meets MM, kind of right, you get underneath park and then immediately have that intersection with, with McCoy and MM. Uh, that's also going to be improved with a, a signal as well. Uh, they're relocating the turn lane. They're relocating the Cap City Trail. They're adding some painted bike lanes. This is a pretty significant project uh, just to really try to, to ease the flow of traffic. That's one that gets, gets really backed up, especially around rush hour. Um, but this one, uh, that, that, that should be a... Uh, very useful improvement for that area for, for cycling and driving, kind of all of the above. So all that come in the next year and a half. Is there any plans to ever, or how long out are we to redo Irish Lane, at least from Syene out to MM? Um, that one, I'm, I, I'm not sure on. Um, I, I thought that was slated for this year. I thought, um, I thought that was going to be a 2020 project. I, I don't get down there very often, so I can't speak to, I, I guess you, you get down in that area a lot. Is it not something that's been started yet this year? It's, I don't think it's been started yet this year, but it's still early in the year. So that I wouldn't be that, you know, I'm not trying to be critical. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's probably one of the roads in Pittsburgh that's in the worst condition. Okay. That yeah, second. We, do, we have that slated for this year. This uh, It's out for bid right now, and hopefully, depending on bid prices, uh, we can get that done this year. Fantastic. Great news. Thank you. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. Yeah. Haven't, uh, haven't seen your face in a couple months. Yeah, no, I've been kind of lurking in the background here for the past 20 minutes or so, so. Okay, I, I hope I didn't misrepresent anything. Nope, I would have stepped in if you did. All right. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, there's also, so um, so just as kind of a, uh, just as a heads up for, you know, certainly we, we want to be able to cover all these as, as best we can, and I'm trying to get all the information I'm, I'm able to, to bring to the committee. Uh, but you can also go to the city's website and the engineering, uh, if, if, if you go to the engineer public works webpage, you can click into streets and transportation and then design and construction here. Uh, and that'll bring you to all the current projects under construction. Uh, you can see what's recently been completed, what's, what's slated in the future. And this is really nice, this uh, 2020 to 2022 major construction map. So you can kind of take a look at, at the projects that are, um, planned out for the next couple of years. That's that's also really nice for, for just sort of getting a picture of where things are. And of course, I'm going to continue to bring projects here when 
when they uh, are expected to impact the bike network, but but just sort of for for your own outside of these meetings edification, I guess this is a a, a page that is kept up pretty well. Um, I did, and Bill, since you're here, um, I did hear from some people, and they've also been posted on Bike Fitchburg and Bike Madison web pages that the bike accommodations over in the new Fahey Glen area, people really like them. They've been really positive about those. Cool. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> Uh, Phil, that map that you had up, uh, <coughs> is there something similar for bike routes specifically that folks could use to kind of see what's coming up in terms of detours? Um, right now, I don't have that. The, the difficulty there, I, um, I'd i like to get to the point where I'm comfortable making those. I have some experience working with ArcGIS, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm um, particularly adept with it. Uh, and especially working from home on the VPN, it's been it's been pretty slow trying to get anything pulled up there. So eventually, I'd like to get to a point where I can uh, put together uh, some 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 bike impact maps. Uh, the best I've got right now is actually let's back out here under streets. We can go to biking, and then I try to keep uh, this biking page updated with with any uh, current projects that impact the network. I think it's probably due for another update right now. Uh, certainly when the when the Cap City Trail work comes in from the county, I put a link to their maps on here because if they've already created the maps, I don't see a reason to to duplicate their work. Um, but no, nothing nothing nearly as as pretty or comprehensive as this uh, exists for the bike network right now. But that that would definitely be something. It's 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 on the nice to have list. I'm not sure how realistic it is in the short term, but definitely something that that is in the back of my mind. But good, good to hear a, a vote in favor of it, and I'll keep that in mind as well. Thanks. Anything else on projects, Phil, or any more feedback from the committee? I believe that is everything for projects. Okay. Um, as we wrap this topic up, and again, as we as we reconstitute our committee here, uh, if you are hearing things between meetings. Uh, please let Phil or myself know we can at least point him in the right direction. As I said, I've got a small signage issue out about Cap City I've already raised with Phil and Bill, and it may not even be them to deal with in the long run, but uh, people are getting lost as they uh, get over by Cahill, Maine, uh, coming across the bridge. Um, mm -hmm. It's a small issue. It's science. It's not any road construction. So at any rate, anything else on this before we move into the uh, gold journey? Well, thank you, Phil. Nice job. And Bill, again, we appreciate your time working with us. And as I said, as I said before, we got a lot of construction work going on. So um, we'll try and help and not hinder you. <laughs> okay. Thank you much. Okay. Andy you, or Phil, you want to go next into the um, gold status? Yeah, let's do that. Um, and do you want to, do you want to call it the discussion this, Mark, or would you like me to? I think I'll kick this off. Um, sure. Last, when I was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce, as somebody of you know, and it, and we had helped uh, Bike Fitchburg as they'd applied for the first, uh, back in 15 or 16 for their first status, and uh, we moved to silver status, um, but we didn't get gold this last October, November, so we, be I began to put thoughts together on a work group um pulled out items that we need to know. We have had a conference call that Andy, we had Andy and Julia, myself and uh, and Phil on this work, small work group. We can't, Joe, as, as you, with your Alder hat on, we can't call it a committee. <laughs> so we made it a small work group, um, not to get, around the, to get around the city rules on things. So we put together, I put together a, what I'm calling a playbook. Um, as we plan to move this to gold, everybody we talk to says that it will help Fitchburg to move to gold. Um, and so we put this plan together that is just right now, everybody's for information. And we've got a small work group that was that did, did consist of Julia, Andy, myself, and Phil. And then we invited Steve Arnold from Bites Fitchburg. And we had also have, and, and it's been suggested, Angela, Angela Kinderman joined the work group. But what I did here was uh, in 
May, when we were still all shut down, I put together this draft work plan. And I want to tell you it's a draft. It's my work. And Phil and Tony Hartman had both also given me feedback. If some of you don't know Tony, Tony's a former alder. He's involved with Bike Fitchburg, too, and he's a big bike rider. And he lives, I think, out in the southern reaches of our, of our city as well. So we've, um, from our meeting, from our report cards, from my research, from our talk with um, by, or with the American League of American Bicyclists, I put this call, I put this together, and I present it to you, I think, I guess, for your feedback, number one, and then number two, to see if we've missed anything. So um, I think I will stop there. I'm not going to go through each one in detail. I know that Phil sent you um, some other information, starting with our scoreboards. Um, I also know that we put together a list of the deficiencies in 2015 and 2019. And essentially what the league told us is if we could deal with each one of those, which is easier said than done, uh, we would move ourselves to gold status. The, the key I look at all of this is ensuring we're counting the people that are riding to work through Fitchburg or, and or are riding through Fitchburg. And, uh, and Angie is someone who moves around the city going to work. You can understand that we got to count how many are moving around. We got people going to Epic. We've got people going to sub zero. I think we've got people going to um, the old uh, Nicolay area over there on spoken sprocket, et cetera. So, um, we put this all together. The other thing we need to do is get more bike friendly businesses engaged. And we'd engage with Andrea, Andrea Kinderman, but we ended up with the pandemic putting us, stopping us in our tracks. So I think we're ready to restart. And Phil, I'm going to stop there. Would you add any more on what this work plan has in it? Um, I don't think I'd add anything on the work plan itself. I think you, you characterized it uh, really well. Yeah. I, I, I would say um, uh, the, a, a couple of the key steps. So there are, you know, as Mark mentioned, probably 10 different things that uh, you could find between the 2015 and 2019 scorecard reports that we received from the, from the league. Um, but they, they definitely gave us the impression that a couple of the gaps that they identified were more important than others. Of, of course, one of them is ridership. Right now, the, the bike league, um, they estimate ridership in the community based on the, the, the ACS, the, what does that stand for? American community survey. That's sort of part of the census comes out every, every couple of years, uh, in, in between censuses and they, they take a smaller subset of the population and ask them a number of questions. One of them is how do you, uh, how do you commute to work on a regular basis? And so, uh, any residents of Fitchburg who report that they, uh, primarily bike to work. They're counted as a bike commuter. That's what the bike league uses to estimate our ridership. Now, if you drive three days a week and bike two, do you report that you drive to work and then you don't count as a bike commuter for these purposes? Uh, it's it's a very imperfect metric. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't capture things like how often do people bike for recreation for for getting other places around town besides home to work and 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 so things like that are are missing from that, so we need to find a way to better capture, um, better capture the, the the full number of people in Fitchburg who bike, uh, as well as just a way to represent the fact that we are a major throughway for people biking between Madison, Monona, Middleton, Verona, and other other cities, and those don't get captured in these numbers either. Okay. That was going to be my comment: was the the person living in Madison and working in Epic who bikes through Fitchburg does not get counted as right. a Fitchburg cyclist. Yep. So the, the one thing that we do have, and I've got a, a slide uh, <clears throat> a little bit farther down here that, that shows how far uh, I'd have to get, I'd have to go quite a ways to get there, but it's, it's down, um, but I think it's part of my, my staff report notes. Uh, but we do have a, a spreadsheet from uh, Dane County Parks that they've got a bike counter on the Cap City Trail near the bike roundabout. Um, that doesn't count specifically cyclists. It's any traffic. If you're walking, if you're walking your dog, maybe you count as two. I'm not sure. Uh, if you're biking, then then you're counted as one. But it at least it at least does count traffic, and it's the closest thing we have to a bike counter at this point. 
Um, so every couple of months, I'm asking Alex for, for the updated data on that. Uh, it just gives us a little bit better sense of just that one trail in Fitchburg, what kind of data ridership is it getting? Uh, but that's a huge one. Some other, some other major improvements that they pointed out in their scorecards are um, <clears throat> continuing to enhance our, enhance our bike infrastructure, especially those protected paths and lanes where the speeds, uh, where car speeds are above 35 miles an hour, um, improving high quality bike parking around Fitchburg, and they stress uh, APBP compliant. I believe that's the American uh, uh, American Bicyclists and Pedestrian something, but it's it, it's just a, a, a series of criteria that, that high quality biking should meet in order to, to really be the most efficient and accessible. Um, expanding bike safety education, especially targeting women, seniors, families, other specific demographic groups. Uh, it's no surprise that, that cycling in Wisconsin, just like in most other places, is primarily engaged in or and, and targeted towards uh, a very white demographic, uh, especially white males, but but white riders in general. Is that something that uh, that we do well to to figure out how to address? Um, and then evaluating and removing barriers to bike ownership and ridership. And so one of those is uh, a lot of cities have uh, a lot of cities have um, legislation or 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 at least um, what's the term I'm looking for, Mark. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, a lot of ordinances. Thank you. A, a, a number of cities have ordinances that mandate bike registration. And the purpose of this is to, uh, I, I think the primary purpose is to help reduce thefts. And you can find bikes if they've been registered. You've got, uh, you've got that number. If a stolen bike is located, you can now trace the owner. Um, but that can also serve as a barrier to cycling because you need to pay 15 to $25 to register your bike. Uh, and if somebody has uh, more difficulty meeting that cost, then that's a little bit of a barrier to, to owning and riding a bike. And so looking at ways to, to still be able to, to register and track bikes without having that, that sort of uh, financial barrier. So a, a, a number of things like that that were pointed out as things Fitchburg could do to improve that would um, significantly enhance our chances of reaching gold. Then we've got this work plan here that Mark created. And it's a couple pages here that was uh, really well organized, just kind of looking at what information we already have and, and what we still need to gather. Um, he outlined the key steps to gold. And this, I'm kind of skipping through a bit because this is all in your packet. Uh, uh, and then I just... Stop for a second, Phil. This, the, yep. the, these two pages right here, Key steps to gold are right off the scorecard. I copied them verbatim, and then I put on here, you know, what's the action we've taken, what's the status, and any kind of comments. Um, I do think the one thing we've done that's really good is we've gotten Bill has been engaged with us, with Phil and I and others, in fact, even joining this committee to sit in about construction and communication. I think that's a good thing that we weren't doing in the, in the past. So um, I do thank you for that bill and uh, we, we're working on these things, but it's gonna take these things that are gonna make, a, basically what Amelia told us from the bike league, getting these things done. And as Phil said, some are more important than others, but getting these things done will will turn us into a, a gold city. And Madison, by the way, is platinum. So there are two steps ahead of us. I'm done, go ahead. All right. Um... But yeah, that's that's pretty much everything. The, the one other thing I added was just kind of for reference. Uh, I know we've looked at this before, but um, uh, Joe and Ellie, you may not have seen this in the past. This is uh, a, a visual from the League of American Bicyclists that just shows um, it's not necessarily that all of these things are required to get from one level to the next, but they sort of surveyed all of their communities that, that are at each of these uh, bike-friendly levels, and they tried to get a sense of what does an average diamond community look like? What does an average platinum, gold, silver look like? So right now we're at silver, if we're looking to get to gold, um, you know, this comparing some of our metrics against this uh, ring here, half ring, is, is uh, at least a good place to start. Uh, so probably the most notable thing is this ridership figure where their average silver community is at 3.5% ridership. 
Uh, their average gold is at five and a half percent. And in this last, um, in our last submission and and rating, they had us at 0.75 percent. So that's that's probably the most significant barrier. If I had to to guess based on what we've seen in our scorecards, what we heard from our call with Amelia with the bike league, uh, getting our ridership numbers. Some of it maybe that a ridership is higher than that 0.75, and we just haven't figured out how to capture it yet. But but some combination of getting better data and also making sure that Fitchburg is a more conducive place to cycling in general. And I I think that for some people it is very bike friendly. I would imagine that there are some pockets of Fitchburg, um, maybe some significant areas of of the city where it is less. Um, uh, it's just a little bit less accessible. And so I think addressing that from both ends and the getting the numbers higher and then making sure that we can capture them is, is probably the most significant improvement we can make. Um, question for you about how we're capturing it. It sounds like there's some flexibility in terms of measuring ridership. Is that right? Ellie, can um, you repeat that, yeah. please? I didn't hear you. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just Thank wondering you. if there's flexibility in terms of, like, the data source for where for how we're measuring uh, ridership. Um, Sounds like the, was it the American Community Survey is what we're using? Could we look at other data sources? Uh, we can, yeah. So we actually asked Amelia about that uh, pretty pretty specifically on the call with her. Uh, and her, her response was they know that the data they're currently using is not perfect. Um, if we have good data and we can make a case for it, they're open to accepting it. So yeah, I think there is that flexibility um, and that, that may take some, some creative thinking on our part, but, you know, Madison, for example, has that bike counter right by Monona Terrace and that's, uh, they, they do get a lot of pedestrians in there, but I don't think the bike league is going to complain and say, oh, you've got a whole bunch of people walking that counts against your bike ability. <laughs> um, but that's, that's a great data source that they can directly submit as part of their applications and, and, you know, getting something along those lines could be really useful. Um, I know we do. Um, I, I just uh, participated in this for the first time with Mark back in, was it January, the, the winter bike to work day? And we kind of sat out at the bike roundabout and, and just at that location, we, we had a little clicker and counted how many people are coming through just on one morning, a two hour period. Uh, so things like that are useful, but yeah, there's, there's, I think they're pretty open to different data sources as long as we um, can sell it and we're confident in it. Ellie, there was, there was, there is one plan we kind of put on hold. In February, uh, Phil and I met with Angie, Angela Kinderman of the Pittsburgh Chamber to talk about surveying our businesses and find out how many folks are riding through or are riding from to get a better count. And again, while it's not the only source, it's certainly the more, it's another source to look at this. So hopefully we can go back um, once businesses at least have a plan as to what's going to happen, we can go back to them and see if we can help and survey. But um, Angela, we just both agreed, and I talked to Angela, that we're just going to kind of hold on that because they've got other things on their mind right now, and I don't blame them. Um, I have a question. Um, apart from where, where I guess, trails are located, um, what have other cities done in terms of um, expanding access and ridership um, that have sort of bumped them up beyond silver and what and what you know what can we think about doing you want you want to try that Phil or do you want me to try it um, what I can say is that I have not uh, actually reached out to other communities and asked them about that specifically so I um, uh, Mark, Andy, I don't remember if Amelia gave us any specific examples like that in our phone call, um, but I, I think I could probably only speculate at best. And I'm going to speculate too, one of which was seniors, uh, getting our seniors more engaged. In fact, the senior center would love to be more engaged. They've already been a little bit involved with Fitchburg cycles, I think, but again, it kind of came to a screeching halt. The other thing is, is the more education we do in the schools, and I'm hoping that the bike hub, as it comes forward on the north side of Fitchburg, will be something, Joe, that will give us, this is something we're doing unique and new to get people engaged. Andy, you were on the call. Do you remember anything else? I think the, the other big thing has been uh, bike sharing. And I think that's a big part of what Madison's able to do is that with B-Cycle, 
that you don't actually have to own a bike in order to utilize uh, biking. Uh, at least for them, I think that's been a, a big piece of their uh, way to expand cycling. So I'll, uh, I, I don't know what kind of relationship we've got with um, B cycle. I, there, there aren't any like stations that I see that are in Fitchburg. Has that ever been a discussion point? Um, it has, and it's actually our next agenda item. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, we're coming, Joe. So we're gonna. <laughs> we're, we're almost there. So, uh, if there's if there's no other questions on this, what I'd like you to do is take a look at it, and we have we're going to continue our small work group of Phil. Uh, Andy, myself, and, and Steve Arnold, and, and we've drafted Joe, uh, who hasn't said yes yet, but Joe's been drafted to help us on this because he's the alder rep who can get us to the city council. Um, is uh, that, yes. Is, so you're, you're going to help us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I probably will regret it later, but yes. Ah, you won't. <laughs> but, but I, I would, think, yeah. Go ahead. I'm done. I was just going to say the, the, the one other thing that I think uh, would go a long ways, and, and Mark, you kind of you kind of touched on this, but the other thing that would get us a, a long ways towards increasing our ridership is education in general, doing things like having bike rodeos and, and kind of bike safety education for kids. Um, you know, Mark mentioned this hub on North Fish Hatch, but there's also going to be a, kind of a pump track there that, that should be, that's, that's in the plans right now, and that would be uh, really useful for, for just giving a, a kind of, bike friendly recreation opportunity nearby and if you get people playing around on a on a pump track more often maybe they're more comfortable riding around the community as well but having those sorts of educational programs and and teach people how to ride safely how to ride around the community um i think would go a long ways that's that's a tough one obviously right now with all the the distancing and isolation but i know that uh safe kids that's located in the um in our original our old fire station safe kids has been speaking with the madison pd about uh, a bike rodeo and i'm trying to follow up with them and with mike Burry and the police department about that um so so more more educational programming and outreach i think would also be really valuable again the key is it's got to be a collaborative group and i just want to we've kind of gone semi-silent for the last 90 days and i think it's time as we get into latter parts of the summer to to re and re-engage our work group. But but let us know if you have feedback on my uh, my work plan says draft. It was only because I was seeing so much communication around this. I felt it's important to put it together. So we're organized moving forward. The last thing I'm doing, I'm trying to keep a laundry list of every change and thing we've done since we received our report card. Um, again, Easy example is that Phil and I met with Bill to go over construction projects uh, and how we can communicate better on things that, to put biking into those projects. Again, that kind of thing we've already got in place. Um, but education, ridership counts, uh, community engagement is how we're going to move this to gold. It's going to take all of us uh, moving forward. As far as ridership counts, um, it sounds like we're not in a place where we would be measuring that yet, but I just wanted to volunteer. I have a lot of ideas about how that could be measured. It's something I do like in my work um, already as far as like determining, you know, how people are commuting and how many, I mean, usually I use METs, but just like how much people are um, commuting, like doing active transport. So um, definitely when you guys look into that, I'm interested in helping. Well, Ellie, why don't you go ahead and shoot them out to us and we can put it in the work plan. Shoot us your ideas. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I think one thing that that uh, would be good to stress is this, the, the bike-friendly community, this sort of uh, path to gold working group that, that we set up in January. Um, the, the primary goal of this was to get a work plan together and, and sort of outline what the steps need to be to get us to gold. Um, we... We definitely have that at least a first draft, if if not, you know, one that we can really work from here. Um, I think what we probably want to look at sooner than later is in in order to, in terms of making all of these items actionable, uh, is is kind of coming to these committee meetings and and you know having people uh, talk about taking these projects on themselves. I think if we if we just have a, a working group that's 
less than half of the committee that's trying to do all this stuff. It's not going to get as far as if we can uh, actually kind of uh, volunteer for or delegate some of these projects out in committee meetings and have have everybody working on them uh, simultaneously. So maybe maybe not necessarily this meeting, but but certainly uh, before too long, I think it would be good to to have some of these items as as agenda items and, and kind of get people working on them outside of meetings. So Ellie, as you see under number two, where it says validate data, there's no name by the stakeholder. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, that's the still set we haven't started. That's one of those things we can get moving. And I really want to make this committee effective. My goal as chair is that we don't have to wait every quarter to come together. This stuff can be moving outside of our regular meetings, as long as we're not violating any of the city rules and regulations. So in trying to stay with yep. the agenda, uh, are there other yes. comments or feedback on the bike plan? Okay, well, let's, let's keep moving, Phil. Give us your input. And again, um, Joe, I think Phil has a topic next that uh, you kind of uh, teed up for him, but this is one that's been on my mind since I used to work at UW and we put in a ton of B-cycles. So let's move to B-cycles, Phil, and the uh, floor is yours. Sure, and I just wanted to make sure that you were aware, Mark, it looks like Angie did back out, so she had yes. a, another meeting to get to. I believe we are still at quorum, though, so we should be able to continue moving forward. Okay. Um, so yeah, we uh, have talked about this a couple times and it's kind of had stops and starts. Um, but as as Joe mentioned, we don't currently have uh, any any bike share stations nearby. Um, there's a, a whole wealth of of bike of B cycle stations. This is Trek's bike share program. Um, they're they're it, it's kind of unique. They're the only uh, bike manufacturer that actually also operates their own bike share program. Uh, but these are a number of the stations throughout Madison. It's obviously a, a a pretty well integrated program in Madison now. It's been very successful. The closest stations, however, to Fitchburg are up here at the entrance to Violet's Park and the Arboretum and over at the, the Sheraton Hotel on John Nolan. So nothing nothing near Fitchburg right now. And so that's, um, if we're looking at potentially having uh, a bike share program, both as an additional option for, for transit in general, and then also as a way to expand ridership uh, and make it more visible that that Fitchburg is really pushing to be um, a, a, a bike friendly community. Uh, something like this would be really valuable. So, um, over the past two months, uh, I, I guess teeing this up, what what began this again because we have sort of uh, stalled out on conversations about a bike share program before. Uh, the one of the biggest factors has been cost. It is not a cheap. Uh, program to get into. Um, so, so we've kind of had conversations, they've sort of gone nowhere, the combination of costs and then Fitchburg is um, <clears throat> largely the, the, the most populated areas of Fitchburg are suburban. And so it's, it's very different from Madison where you can put uh, eight stations within a square mile and they reach 60 businesses. That's just not something that Fitchburg can do as well. A lot of hills, a lot of distance between areas. The two things that uh, that have changed over the last six to 12 months. Um, one is that B cycle is now using e-bikes. And so that enables riders to go farther with less effort. It, it, it kind of removes some of the barrier created by uh, <clears throat> hilly routes because, you know, maybe if you don't want to work up a sweat or if you don't feel as strong a rider, um, that might, that might be uh, too much of an obstacle for you, but e-bikes kind of help to, to flatten that out. Uh, the other one is <clears throat> it doesn't seem like the recession associated with COVID should be uh, an enabling factor for us to get into something like this. But one possibility that, that we're anticipating is that at some point, Congress may pass another stimulus package. That stimulus package may include funding for transportation initiatives. And if that's the case, that's an opportunity for us to apply for grant funding. Uh, and so that would, uh, that would hopefully allow us to access um, <clears throat> this program in, a, in a, an affordable way, in a way that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So, so we kind of wanted to, I've been speaking with Wade Thompson about this, the city's community, de community development planner uh, quite a bit in the last month or two. 
Uh, we wanted, wanted to start putting our heads together and come up with a plan so that if we get to a point where we can apply for grant funding, we've already got a proposal ready to go. Um, so over the past month, we've spoken with TREC, several representatives there, Executive Director Morgan Ramaker, their Director of Business Development, uh, who's also a Fitchburg resident, uh, their Director of Sales, their Sales and Marketing Manager, who is also a Fitchburg resident, so they're, they're excited about getting uh, the possibility of getting the cycle into Fitchburg. Um, <clears throat> and then I've also spoken with representatives from Madison and Middleton, Madison about their existing program, Middleton about um, kind of where they've been. I know they've spoken with TREC as well. Um, so, so these are just a few slides from the presentation we got that, that Wade and I got from the cycle. Uh, some things that you're probably already familiar with that if you dedicate the same amount of space to cars uh, versus bicycles, and if both of them are filled to capacity, a uh, bike network is a lot more efficient. You can transport more people uh, in the same amount of time uh, on bikes as you can in typical car commuting situations. Um, B cycles spread out pretty well across the country. Their, their first large scale system was Denver. They, they fully integrated their program with the existing transit, the metro system in LA. So it's owned and operated by the city and it's part of their public transit uh, infrastructure. Uh, and then Madison was the first program that, that fully integrated e-bikes. Um, one, one useful thing to note about the Madison program is the program is fully owned and operated by TREC. So they kind of use their Madison program to roll out new equipment to test new bikes and docks. Um, so that's they it, it's it's great for us because we're right next door and we get to see a lot of these uh, proof of concepts immediately when they're implemented. Um, but part of the reason that Madison's program, I suspect, is so expansive is because Madison is not actually uh, paying for those docks. Uh, they'll they'll say, hey, we'd love to have a station here and. B cycle will consider it, or B cycle says, "Hey, we want to put a station at this Sheraton," um, and they are able to just do it because they're they're actually owning that equipment. Um, but that also means if we get a program together, it should interface with Madison's really well because it's it's spread out so well. Um, this are just a lot of comments about the incorporation of e-bikes into Madison's fleet, uh, transferring over from manual pedals to to the electric assist. Um, so just a lot of a lot of excitement about it. A lot of people really had positive things to say when they did the initial uh, test rides. And uh, the, the, these are all. I, I would imagine not many people need to be sold on e-bikes, but but they they had a number of these slides as well, just showing the way that that uh, overall ridership has increased since they added the e-bikes. Since this is something that for a a more residential and a more suburban community like Fitchburg, seeing the way that that e-bikes have increased ridership and participation in this program, I think is really encouraging and, and makes it feel uh, like a, a bike share program could be more viable for, for a city like Fitchburg than maybe we would have thought five, six years ago. Um, and this again, they, they started their e-bikes in 2019. So we're looking at 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 month by month. And just the, you know, more than doubling the the average ridership per month in basically every month since they implemented the e-bikes. Uh, so this is something that that it, it wasn't just a uh, it wasn't necessarily just a novelty phenomenon. This is something that seems to be uh, able to be sustained over over time as well. Uh, just get past that. Uh, there has been a little bit of an impact from COVID. Uh, just Transportation in general is down. People aren't commuting to work as often. Maybe people are more reluctant to to even be out in open spaces. I think initially people weren't recreating as much. Um, one thing that I find kind of encouraging about about bouncing back from COVID is we may find people if if we could get a bike share pilot, um, it may be easier to sell people on a. A transportation option where they are by themselves out in the open air you know maybe they bring their hand sanitizer and 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 want to use that before and after they grab the handlebars uh but but certainly people might if they're looking at a bus versus a bike a bike may feel more comfortable if they're not sure about um sharing air with other people yet so this this actually could be um you know in in a recovery from covid bikes might actually have an opportunity to to take over more of that that uh, 
transit share from from things like a, a, a metro bus. And certainly, we hope that that buses continue to be used. They're incredibly valuable, but you know there is possibly some uh, some gains to be made by a bike program there. Um, there there are a few different types for how a bike share program can be handled. One is that, uh, and this this was kind of the early one, is that you have nonprofits that coordinate uh, to to uh, handle the the outreach, the funding, the the coordination. Um, something like a bike Fitchburg, something like a, um, I was going to say Wisconsin bike fed, but, but yeah, more, more local bike focused organizations. And this is something that was successful in, uh, you know, even a place like, uh, central Nebraska, there was a, I think I'm correct, it's Nebraska, not Iowa, but there was a bike share program that maybe a city there wouldn't have had the funding to pursue, but a nonprofit could, uh, and they're the ones that would be coordinating with B cycle, um, uh, down the line, we started getting cities that were like Los Angeles incorporating bike share programs into their public transit. Uh, and so now they're actually dedicating some of their transportation funding to a bike share program. And this is something that they're making available, you know, similar to for a, um, for a, a bus program or a, a, a train program with a city, you can purchase a pass or if you have, uh, if you have, uh, income uh, restrictions, then you can get maybe subsidized passes. Uh, if you have bikes, a uh, bike share as part of your transit program, now a pass for uh, a card for that bike share program is something that's available to you through the through the city in, a, in the same way. Uh, and then some that are doing more of a hybrid, and and this might be something that that would be uh, at least the details about the community fit Fitchburg a little bit better. This would be more neighborhood and recreational focused. Um, we're, we're, we're certainly, uh, we'd be interested in having people who, who could use a bike share program for commuting and for getting around from, from store to store or from a hotel to, to uh, restaurants and things like that, but also because Fitchburg's bike network is so much about uh, the recreational component, the, the connectedness to other cities, then having a bike share program that can connect people to our expansive bike, net, bike network uh, would be really valuable. Um, not to go in deep on any of these, but just for your awareness, um, B Cycle did provide me and Wade with a number of similar cities that that we may uh, be able to reach out to and ask them how the program has worked for them. Uh, cities that are similar in terms of the the initial scope and scale that they were looking at. So Oklahoma City having nine stations with seventy two bikes, uh, Spartanburg five stations and fifty bikes. That's probably along the the lines of what we'd be looking at for a pilot program in, in, in terms of scale, five stations. Uh, so definitely some similar programs that, that we can consider. Um, so what, what Wade and I worked on is putting together kind of a map of Fitchburg and where we thought were corridors that would make sense for bike share in general, but especially for an initial pilot. And what we, what we came down to is that there's a lot of areas that would benefit from having a bike share program, but what seemed like the most natural fit right now is this fish hatchery corridor where we've got this this new hub along Traceway, we've got um, the uh, Hatchery Hill shopping area and 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 some hotels. We've got McKee Farms Park plus some commercial around here, um, and then the the city center with the the city campus, the Agora and Promega location, and then even over uh, at Swan Creek where you've got a, a mixed use of of parks and residential and some some hopefully commercial coming in in this area as well. Um, maybe down the line, we look at things like Terra Vesa, we look at the, the west part of Fishburg, um, you know, areas that are connected to residential and commercial and also our bike network and parks. Maybe we look at um, this this wedge that that could should be coming in from the town of Madison. Um, but at least initially we were we were sort of looking at this central fish hatchery corridor and the city center as a as a pilot program um, opportunity. Uh, and what I'd, what I'd like to do with this still is put in, put together some categorical scoring and just kind of grade all of these based on their, uh, their access to a number of, um, to a lot of residences, their access to businesses, kind of variety of uses so that people would be, would be using these both as starting points and as destinations. So you get bikes flowing in multiple directions. Uh, but I, I kind of want to put together some categorical scoring just to verify that it does make sense, all these locations. Um, 
so that's that's kind of where things are right now with with the B cycle program is that that I've put together this preliminary multi phase map um, with Wade just to kind of plot out where we think it would make sense to have stations uh, in the coming in the coming weeks. I'd like to reach out to some of these communities as as models and ask them for some of their their uh, what their experiences have been like if they have any advice stations that work particularly well or poorly. I want to do that scoring assessment on the category level. Um, there's a lot of literature out there about um, uh, that, I, that I'd like to read on bike share programs, especially in a suburban setting, kind of identifying what our target audiences we would, be, would be and how we'd want to reach them. Um, and then one potentially exciting thing for the committee is that B-Cycle uh, was, was pretty interested in bringing some e-bikes down here, maybe for the bike committee to ride one day just to sort of get a sense of what these bikes are like and, and what that experience would be. Uh, maybe we could invite the alders to join. Um, you know, maybe, maybe do this once we have a little bit more uh, cohesive plan that we'd like to present to to the council, but but actually get a chance for the committee and maybe also the alders to to ride these and and kind of feel that out. Um, but that's where we are right now. Uh, maybe a little bit more in depth than I had intended to go. That that took a fair few minutes. But if anybody, um, Wondering if anybody has any comments or questions after that. I make two, two comments. Joe, you raised this early on. Is this giving you at least an initial overview of what you were looking for? Yes. Um, I actually, um, if I would also encourage you um, to look right on Williamsburg Way. Uh, and mm -hmm. I know uh, you, myself, and Mark had talked about this. Right now, you know, that plaza is empty, but, mm -hmm. you know, I've been sort of actively seeking out businesses to come into that space. For sure. Um, if that place is filled to capacity, there will be, you know, there's a potential of having like five businesses over there in addition to all the apartments that are there, all the houses that are there. It's right down the street from, you know, Target and Aldi's and all that. Um, and I think it would bring additional, um, I guess, interest, economic activity, um, engagement to that area. So, I mean, it, although I love the, you know, that Dunn's Marsh is a consideration because um, I live there, um, yeah. I, th I think uh, west of Verona Road might, you know, need some love as well. And, and I think it can contribute a lot too. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And this is something Wade and I talked about a lot. We actually drove through that exact, uh, that exact shopping area you're talking about on Williamsburg way. And we were, we were, you know, kind of trying to envision that as a, as a, a B cycle station. I think one thing that, that still needs a lot of discussion and thought is, is sort of the chicken egg of, of, <laughs> Uh, an area becoming maybe more bike friendly and then we add in stations to kind of help sell it or if we put the stations in first and then the bike network follows because right now especially with Verona Road cutting this up as as, as uh, a huge barrier for for ease of movement um, I, I, I guess what for, certainly for a pilot program we want to go places that we know people are riding now just because we want that pilot to be successful and, and enable us to, to, to really get a foothold and, and then be able to spread this further. But we also are very much aware of equity concerns in some areas of the city that, that currently are not served as well by the bike network. And we don't want to just keep um, avoiding that. That's, that's absolutely, that needs to be a priority. Um, and so that's, you know, we're, we're looking up here where we've got some commercial shopping areas. We've got the Boys and Girls Club, but there's also a lot of residential area. There's also access to the bike network. So having a couple stations here would make a ton of sense. Um, but then we're looking at this, if we want the whole B-cycle network to be connected to each other, we're trying to figure out what would be kind of an intermediary point. And we just have a bunch of suburbs around here that maybe aren't as natural fits for a bike share dock. Uh, and so we'd like to find a way to, to make this work where maybe we sort of have two like bike share network A and network B and they don't cross over much down the road. Uh, it would be amazing if we could have something that is fully integrated throughout the city. But this this is definitely something that that is at the top of our mind, and and we want to, you know, I'd love to have more conversations with you about that. But we want to find a way that we can make that work. Um, um, but yeah, there's just a lot of, a lot of things to consider there. 
So in Dunn's Marsh, and I don't want to take up too much time of this. We can talk offline, but in Dunn's Marsh, where would you think about putting it? Um, I there's a lot of intersection with Madison. Um, yeah, we we thought about um, with with Dunn's Marsh, kind of what what we were picturing. And let me pull up my other map here too. Um, we were sort of looking at something along like. You know, maybe you could have one station in in like uh, at, at one of the entrances to the bike network here, like along Crescent Road or along Chalet Gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, it 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 kind of seemed like it would make sense to have one maybe near, um, maybe along like Red Arrow Trail. You know, we've we've got a number of 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 commercial spots there. There's there's a grocery store that I think would be. I guess because these these bikes only have like the one front basket, people can't do extensive shopping trips on them. But but small trips, you know, if you have one one that's down here, kind of embedded in the residential area and also near the bike network, you've also got one up near um, some 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 fast food and groceries. And there's the the Boys and Girls Club. I think there's a couple of natural fits there for where people would be coming and going a lot. Uh, and so you could really uh, help to help to facilitate. Uh, ease of movement there those were sort of the first couple places that we thought of were one up along red arrow trail and near the frontage road and one down by crescent road yeah but, it's uh the 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 store is my wife's store um it's it's um it's in madison though so oh, I'm, it is I'm, okay yeah i'm, I'm guessing i'm then guessing we, you'd probably uh, have to pull in like madison well, well, and then that may be something where if, if B cycle and I, I think B cycle really is committed to making this work in Fishburg, if 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 it's something we're committed to, I could envision some kind of partnership where we put a station or two in this area, and in response they say, all right, we're going to make we're going to put a station here ourselves because that's the deal they've got with Madison. Um, if if we put in a bike share program, if we put in a B cycle program, we would be. Uh, very likely we would be purchasing and owning these stations and the bike that I've got. I know we're running, we're kind of out of time, but I want to throw some numbers up here really quickly in a second. Um, we would kind of be owning and operating these stations, uh, but B-Cycle has staff that would be helping us monitor. They would be kind of tracking what the numbers of bikes are in each dock. And if they need to balance bikes out, you know, come to this spot, pick up a few bikes, take them over here, they can do that. And so they're already doing this for Madison. If we have a, a Madison station here and a couple of Fitchburg ones, then you know they'd be servicing them both in the same way. And so I think that's something that um, they're, they they definitely encourage those sorts of regional partnerships. And so I think that's something we could talk with them about finding a way to make work. Hey, Phil, sorry, sorry. To, I just got to ask one more question. I, so yeah. there used to be a tunnel that went under, like Verona Road, and and that is gone. And I know the only really way to cross sort of in the middle is like going on a bike lane on the street. Is there any plans for infrastructure to like? Um, are you talking about Fisher on a road? Um, or, or kind of off the trail by that roundabout near the Home Depot? I'm talking about um, there used to be, there used to actually be a like physical tunnel that you could oh, bike through okay. to get across Verona to Williamsburg. And yeah, that's so not... it was the, let me, excuse me, I'm trying to watch time here. It yeah. was over by Allied Drive and you went up the Cap okay. City Trail going west. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. it is gone. Right they, they took it away when they did the road construction. Hmm, okay. I'm just saying that to bring up sort of like, you know accessibility and increasing ridership and yeah you know whatnot yeah, for sure because crossing that road is you know you got to go on the street otherwise you have to go like mm -hmm. way further north or way further south yeah that's yeah i wasn't even aware of that that trail before but shoot <laughs> it's yeah. been gone for a couple yeah. of years but, but yeah. phil can would you like to entertain anybody before we close i know you've got an update if you have anything else to cover would you like to entertain a small work group to help you pull this together? Um, yeah, I, if anybody is interested in, in working on this and helping, helping put together, you know, I, I kind of want to put together a sort of um, essentially a sales pitch on this um, and, and really do, do an analysis of what it would look like, what it would cost, where stations would be, what, that, what kind of an impact that could have on the community. Um, it's, it's not a huge lift, but not a small one. 
uh, certainly wouldn't wouldn't turn down any help that people would like to, to offer. I think that's the key about the committee is we all stay engaged away from our quarterly meetings. So if, if you are interested, let Phil know. The other thing I would add on this is we need to circle back, Phil, you and I to Angela. And number two mm -hmm. about this and number two is We've got some businesses who may be inter who may entertain something like this. Somebody like ProMega, someone like Saris yeah. who's in the bike business. And again, Joe, as you look over that way, Saris is closer to your neighborhood you mentioned, and there may be some creative ideas. I don't know. So that yeah, that could definitely be. There's some partnerships that could be identified in there where maybe some companies are willing to help sponsor a station and some bikes, and in exchange, they've you know maybe we we consider putting a station that's more accessible to their employees. Um, grant funding is certainly an option we want to look at. So the numbers that I got, and these are these are really rough estimates, but the numbers that I got uh, for the cost of these stations is somewhere in the range of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for one station that can hold upwards of ten bikes. Uh, the bikes themselves would cost about twenty two hundred dollars each. And so if we want to put together a five or six dock pilot program with six to eight bikes per dock, we're looking at about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar pilot program. So definitely we want to be looking at, you know, maybe we can get some advertising from local businesses and they'll pay for that, looking at grant funding if there's some kind of uh, a new federal stimulus package that enables it. And then, yeah, those those kinds of local partnerships. Um, I'm, I think it's probably not likely that we'd get $150,000 of funding from our transportation budget in the next couple of years. Um, but yeah, those kinds of creative funding opportunities are, are the kinds of things we'll need to come up with to, to really show that this can be viable. And don't uh, forget uh, the ongoing costs. Right, and the ongoing costs. Yeah, Phil, I'll, I'll definitely um, work with you on that. Um, awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I can uh, I can reach out to you in the next uh, week or so, kind of with, with where I'm at and some thoughts on it. Okay. Um, and then just kind of as a, as a quick final rundown, because we're kind of out of time, but the report from the department, just a quick thanks to Mark and Andy, um, and also Steve Arnold, who's not here. Uh, they, they worked... Uh, really well with Bill on the, the bike route detour with the closure of Seminole Highway and the Badger State Trail. Um, I know it's not easy to, to, to ride that, that detour just because it's hilly, but it's really well marked. And, and uh, Andy and, and Mark and Steve all put a lot of work into uh, communicating with Bill to make sure that that was as, as uh, easy to, to find as possible. Um, again, I'll, I'll reach out to the, to the committee to, to ask about possibly scheduling a, a special time to bring e-bikes down to Fitchburg for, for the committee to test it out. I don't know if that's something we would want to do in maybe late July or if we want to save it until we've had another chance to, to talk more about this, but that's, that's something I want to keep on our radar. Um, I did reach out to Mike Burry with the PD to ask about the bike registration ordinance that we have. I haven't heard back yet, but again, I'll keep the committee updated as that goes forward. Um, uh, and I think, oh, the, the League of American Bicyclists, I'm going to put this in the next green e-newsletter that I send out, uh, but the League of American Bicyclists has two links on their website that I think are worth clicking through in light of recent events uh, and just things that should be on our radar as a, as a matter of course anyway. One is, so here's bikeleague.org. One is a link um, with uh, several uh, articles and other links that, that just discuss the issues of equity and inclusion in transportation, specifically biking, and I think that would be good for, all, for, for us to read and be aware of in general. Um, the other one is there is a new uh, transportation fund, uh, funding bill that's coming before the House called the Invest in America Act. They're going to be considering in early July. There are several... Um, there are several amendments and, and other details in this act that have to do with bike transportation and with equity in biking. Um, so there's a, if, if you click on this link, you can, you can send a, uh, you can sign a letter and have that sent to your representative. If you, if you feel this is something that you would like to support and you'd like your representative to support, then they, they enable you to get in touch with your representative and, and um, push them to, to, uh, vote accordingly on that bill. So that's that's something I'd encourage everybody to be familiar with. Uh, the next meeting that we have is technically scheduled for Tuesday, July 21st, but that uh, doesn't give us much time between now and then since these should be quarterly meetings. So unless anybody objects, what I'd like to do is send out a new doodle poll and ask for, uh, ask for folks free time when they could meet in either August or September as our Q3 meeting and then move our fourth quarter meeting from October 
into probably November. Are there any objections to, to that idea? Sounds good to me. Okay, great, thanks. So, uh, as the chair, I apologize for running us over by, uh, is it four or eight minutes? I gotta look at my- uh, uh, That's eight minutes and I'll take all the, all the blame for that one. Don't worry about it. Um, so we've got some work we're gonna do. We'll be getting back with everybody. I wanna, I wanna uh, welcome again, Joe and Ellie. Um, we look forward to making this a very active committee. And um, uh, I too thank Phil for helping us move this forward and Bill and Andy as well. So uh, we're gonna get there guys. I think it's gonna be a long journey. I think because times have changed, but I think we also use that as an opportunity. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn Second. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm not sure who 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 said. Did anybody motion? Who, motion, who put the? Oh, I'm sorry. So so move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion's been moved by Joe. Do we have a second? Uh, sounds like Andy seconded. All right. Second from Andy. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, we are adjourned. Uh, we will talk with you soon. You'll get minutes. And again, um, to Ellie and Joe, if you've got any comments on the meantime, let us know with things.